like that. It's the dangerous decisions we make as women. Like, as you see me right now, driving with no glasses on, if you know me, then you know how illegal this is, because I'm legally blind. <laughs> police! Police! Help! Police! Help! Police! Help! Help! Police! Help! But I can, I, if I'm in a place that I'm familiar with, I can navigate, like, you know, without my glasses. Like, I pretty much know. I can see the lines on the ground. I'm nearsighted. I can see near. I just can't see far. So, you know what I'm saying? I can see directly in front of me. And, you know, the lights if somebody happens to be a little bit further. But, you know, it's just, I'd rather wear my lashes. And I have them beat up against my uh, glasses. And yeah, that's just one of the many dangerous decisions and sacrifices we make as women. And I never really thought that like lashes would actually be in my my makeup routine. Like it used to just be brows, concealer, bronzer, and I used to do the eyeliner, like the wing eyeliner. But this is better than wing eyeliner, like. <laughs> and it's like I sell the individual lashes, but now I'm like, damn, because. I want to just get the the um, extensions. I got them before at Amazing Lash Studio, and that was like, I didn't really like them. They were like way too natural. They weren't full enough. And then the whole charging me, like the subscription thing, I wasn't messing with. So um, yeah, it's just like strange that this really, this really what I do now. <laughs> this who you are. <laughs> this is who I am. <laughs> so I'm already running late, and then this is what I'm dealing with. One lane, one lane, one lane. Look at my face. It's been an hour. An hour. Okay, so let me tell you how God works. So I've been like really trying to like connect with like my spirituality, figuring out what God wants me to do, what's of the world, what's of him, what, you know what I'm saying? What, what are we being lied to about? Like, it's just so much stuff I'm trying to uncover. I'm trying to be led, not by books and all of that stuff. Cause I just feel like everything is written and created with a bias. If somebody wants to prove a certain point, they're going to use certain history and certain events and things of that nature to prove those points or certain statistics to prove those points. It's, it's not hard to manipulate statistics and words and I just want to connect with my intuition and what God wants me to see. And then he provides confirmation for me. And then I move like that. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, I um, have also been trying to eat a little bit healthier. I'm being led to eat healthier and to, you know, take more care of my body and to watch the things that I'm using. Long story short, I was really irritated in that um, doctor's appointment because it was so long like i was there for an hour or so um an hour and like 30 30 minutes and um i wasn't being seen so i was just kind of aggravated and then i'm also in the season learning out how to speak up for myself um a lot of times i'll sit somewhere and be inconvenienced and not speak up on it so um i was like dang do i need to walk out and ask them do i need to reschedule you know it was like a lot of stuff going on in my mind and my doctor gets in there and um I, i'm telling you about the the i promise to just listen to me my doctor like i just felt like i feel like at my last couple of doctor's appointments she's been a little bit dismissive here is the the cat is out the bag i am pregnant <laughs> there's a baby inside of me and my last pregnancy was high risk and i i didn't know it until i went on my online portal and then i found out this pregnancy um, you know, I have a few symptoms like I had in my first pregnancy. I haven't been deemed high risk, but, um, you know, I am underweight. I'm 110 pounds and I'm 19 weeks pregnant. So I'm underweight or whatever. Anyways, let me get to the end of the story. So my doctor automatically just came out and was telling me, you know, like it's my, she asked me what I ate and I told her I had like some blueberry muffins and some cream cheese and some fruit and 
I can't remember what else I told her. And this happened last time, and it's kind of like, you know, for me, I'm like, I've been spending more money on my groceries. I'm really trying to take out the time, you know, to eat better and to, you know, feel better and to get up and be in my routine. And I feel like she just kind of be dismissive, and she's like, well, you dizzy because it's the way that you're eating. And I, it's like, feel bad for me. I'm dizzy, like, be on my side. Why am I dizzy? But at the end of the day, like, she gave me so many tips about things that I need to be eating. And I just feel like it's so many small lessons that God tries to teach us through. But we think it's a coincidence or we're so busy on thinking that we're not being heard or whatever it is that, you know, whatever reason why we're not accepting advice or accepting whatever lessons we're supposed to be extracting from these small little situations and scenarios. And instead of me just sitting there and listening to her and saying, you know what, I have to incorporate these things, you know, it might not make sense to me, but that's holistic health. She's not telling me to go and get this pill or she wants to prescribe this to me. This is what I've been asking for. Somebody that will guide me in a whole a holistic way of health, making sure that I'm balanced. Not just spiritually, of course, I'm praying for spiritual counsel and, you know, guidance and stuff like that. But this is like, she's here equipping me with the, the tools and the resources that I need to be able to effectively bring this baby into the world. And it's like, I could write it off and say that she doesn't care about my feelings and she doesn't care about me as a patient. I'm telling her that, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to. And it's not, you know, long story short, sometimes you have to stop get out of your head stop thinking that things are attack or that you're being ignored and maybe god is like kiana i see that you're spending more money on your food and that you're trying but let me tell you how to wrap this section up do this this that and the third make sure that you have a carb make sure that you have your protein make sure that you have this and we can get out of this season but sometimes we we're just so stuck on where we are and wanting people to understand where we are instead of allowing people to promote us to wherever we're trying to go or help us or assist us or guide us or counsel us to wherever we're trying to go so next if i ignore this then it's a high risk pregnancy and issues you know having to be rushed to the hospital or being dizzy and falling out or whatever because i didn't want to extract this from this small lesson just listening to my doctor incorporating the things that she's telling me it's like so many small lessons that we could learn from so many small lessons throughout the day that we can extract before having to get to big lessons like this is exactly what I, i've been praying for somebody to guide me somebody to you know teach me how to nurture my body um holistically and that's what my doctor is doing and the nerve of me to have an attitude because you don't understand my pain sometimes god is not going to sit and sympathize with you And sometimes, a lot of times, we know that shit be temporary, but we want to sit and, and have a pity party. But at the end of the day, there's things that we could be doing to get out of our situations. There's things that we go through on a daily basis that are trying to teach us things. And we, we cannot mute those things. Yeah. That's what I had to say. So, now, uh, I think I'm going to go get the car washed. I also need to go get some blood work done today. But I don't know if I'm going to make it because I need to... Let me see if I'ma make it or not, and then I'll let y'all know. Yeah, like you know me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put my trust in old man. Your soul just keep the door in. Come and stop the flu. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I went into LabCorp. Um, a lot of these places I can't really film. Y'all know I'm weird when filming in person anyway, so I'm not gonna like, I mean, filming in public anyway, so I don't wanna like step on no toes. But I got this when I was at getting my blood work done. And I'm wondering, should I get it done? Now, I'm 19 weeks, and I get my ultrasound done at 22 weeks. But I think it'll be, like, a really cool idea. And since I'm not having, like, a baby shower or, like, a gender reveal or anything, I think it'll be cool to do it, like, virtually with y'all. So, like, if y'all want me to do it, if y'all want me to do it, then let me know. Look at my baby. It's small damage, but this is a brand new car. Here go new car. It ain't the best, but it's better than nothing. 
Okay, y'all. So this is the Malibu, the Malibu 2021, and I can already tell some differences between my car. Like I have a um, Honda Accord 2020, and I like this to an extent. I don't like really the way that it rides. It remind me of like when I had a Versa. It kind of, I don't know. You could tell it's like it do something to preserve like energy or something or gas or something i'm not sure but one thing that i do like is when you answer a phone call or like when you're recording and stuff it turns the air down i don't know if you've ever been like on social media before like on a live video or on the phone and people can't hear you because the air condition is too hot to like towards the speakers but it does that and i really do like that i like the size of it too it's pretty cool it really reminds me of like the versa one thing that I can say that I don't like about this car is safety features like with the phone. I'm like trying to record and listen to music and stuff at the same time and it keeps cutting my music off and it keeps disconnecting from like the Bluetooth. And it's one of those cars when you're driving, you can't reconnect it to the Bluetooth. So it's kind of frustrating when it comes to like connecting your devices. And then typically if you don't want to deal with the Bluetooth, you could just deal with plugging in the USB cord. But the USB cord, it's annoying. Like it don't, it keep going in and out and it try to pick up the Bluetooth. So I don't like that aspect of this Malibu or this Chevy, whatever the hell this is. I like the fact that this part is touchscreen because I know even though this little thinking majigga that I have in my car is not touch screen. Like I thought it was for a very long time and I had to train myself to like not touch it. And now I feel like when I get this car back, I'm gonna have to retrain myself to not touch it. Totally done today. Had absolutely no time. Oh, I gotta go get my wallet. Where are you going? So hot in these streets. I just know my vagina got some type of silk print. <laughs> Did you have fun? Huh? Reagan. We got a new car. A temporary car. cannot stand when the person in front of you have absolutely nowhere to go and they just continue to allow people in front of you like if you don't get your ass in a slow fucking lane and do that shit over there i just feel like everybody that i get behind don't have nowhere to fucking go nowhere to go but then when you get in front of them they feel some type of way and want to speed up and ride your ass like Ooh, I need to do a, a, a car safety vlog because y'all should see the reason why my road rage is so bad Like some people think I'm just a bitch, but it's not that it's because like I'm very very cautious of not get stepping on other people's toes or You know playing a, a role of inconvenience for somebody else and people here. They just so fucking selfish I feel like somebody will damn near kill you because they finna miss their exit instead of going to the next light and just making a u-turn and saying You know what? I take an L somebody will hurry up jerk in front of you make you press your brakes to the point you almost lose balance in your vehicle because they're inconvenient so you willing to push along your inconvenience on me because you're inconvenient like no i don't even know you i don't like that i don't like that i'm the type of person i'll go to the next light i'm not finna go over three lanes and inconvenience three people and partially get them heart attacks because i'm finna be late somewhere it seems like you need to leave a little bit earlier period i just feel like the nature of human beings is so fucking look at that did you see how he just turned the fuck out that's what i'm talking about daddy chill what the hell is even that and i'm also the type of person i always don't have places to go and things to do and i got time but when i'm in those type of moods i get out of people's way if i see somebody got somewhere to go and they rushing up on my ass not only for the, my safety but because obviously you got somewhere to go go like i let people go i'm not finna just sit somewhere and just totally i don't got shit to do y'all shouldn't have shit to do either i'm gonna go 20 and a 60 because i don't have anything to do like i just feel like people are so damn inconsiderate and i don't i don't i don't think anybody gets it now i can tell y'all about my pregnancy i was keeping it to myself for a little bit but now that i can tell y'all about it 
I want y'all to know I've been going through hell. Like, I'm talking about throwing up bile. I don't know if you're familiar with bile, but it's like this yellow or green, whatever color my body chooses to produce that day. Um, really bitter fluid. It comes from your stomach in the morning. Like, when you don't have anything to throw up, your body throws up like this liquid, this this gas stuff from your stomach I've been throwing that up like then holding Reagan and then she be crying and then I had to give myself an enema do you know what an enema is like I was so backed up like this has been flipping crazy but it teaches me so much like to just take care of my body and to you know um I don't know like it's, it's really an experience especially when you're doing it by yourself it connects you with your strength it like it really activates something and then we haven't had AC in four days look at my tummy and my boobs that's all I am is tummy boobs and nose she's so heavy I think that's one of my biggest fears too like not fear I just like I dread having two car seats and it's so crazy because my granny bought me a stroller and when I opened it the stroller was for two babies and it was an accident mommy is so out of breath I'm so much. I'm not bringing nothing this time. My, this stuff don't be mine. And it's sitting in my car. And I look trifling because it's paper in my car that's not even for me. Ooh, I got a check. Mommy got a check for $100. Look, and this is TXU. I haven't had them for years. Oh my gosh. $100 and something. $100. <laughs> Okay, ma'am. The real question for me is, how do companies know, why does it take companies so long to send you money when they owe you? But when you owe them, they hit you up. Like hit you up, up. Try to hit your credit and everything. But it's two years later. I ain't had TXU in two and a half years. And y'all wanna send me a check? I appreciate it, but damn. Can I fuck up your credit? You know what else I think about? I feel like insurance companies, for all of the accidents I swerve, cause I swerve a lot of accidents, of people just, just not paying attention. Can you pay me like for that? Can you decrease my premium for that? I'm gonna try to get them on camera, but I don't wanna get caught. I don't wanna get caught, but it's content, okay? Let's see. They're fixing my AC. I feel like I'm spying on people, so I'm gonna stop. <laughs> it's slowly but surely <laughs> coming down. It's been like 80 degrees in here, 85 degrees during the day, day, day. Like this is everything. So we gonna go. Thank y'all for tuning into this vlog. <laughs> I'm so excited we got air. <laughs>